This is the iPhone 14 Pro in deep purple. A great looking phone with an excellent camera and a slightly updated design. Now does this warrant a purchase from you, the buyer? Well, let's find out. And to start, I want to talk about the performance. It's no shocker that iPhone 14 Pro has great performance when playing games. The higher refresh rate also means animations when gaming or navigating through the UI feel more fluid. I found that going in and out of tasks felt light, and the same can be said when I transitioned between apps. It's nice to see the 6GB of RAM in the 14 Pro boosting the capacity to hold apps in memory. I found that Face ID was really snappy and very accurate, as it can now unlock even when you have a face mask on. Now I gotta say, brilliant implementation on Apple's part, especially from a technological standpoint, as it's only really using the top half of your face to accurately unlock your device. However, this is a feature that's practically useless now, now that the mask mandate has actually been removed out here in NZ. So yeah, a little too late for Apple on that one. Now I want to jump into the design. I really like that the design carries over from the iPhone 12. I found that the boxier design is much more delightful to hold while allowing for more space internally. A win-win situation. This holds true for the 14 Pro, with the only noticeable difference being the dynamic island and the beefier camera system. Now we will get to the camera system, but before I do, I want to mention that the speakers are actually pretty decent. Alright, so I want to put the focus, no pun intended, on the new 48 megapixel sensor, which combined with Apple's new image processing system is designed to enhance image quality, especially in low light scenarios. The A16 Bionic chip also adds new functionality to the camera system, like video stabilization mode and the ability to shoot cinematic mode videos in 4K. The main camera takes brilliant photos. The details within each photo are sharp, with the image quality overall being superb in well-lit scenarios. Photos were well exposed and colors were punchy, with quite a few photo profiles to choose from depending on your preference. The biggest improvement over its predecessor, however, was in medium to low light situations. Colors and textures were able to be retained in less than ideal situations. I found that when compared to the 13 Pro, nighttime photos on the 14 Pro were a lot brighter with less image noise, and it only took a few seconds to get a good nighttime shot every time. And this is all thanks to Apple's Photonic Engine, which essentially revamps iPhone's image processing stack to enhance low light photos by improving color fidelity, image quality, as well as brightening up the photos and retaining a lot of detail, which I found to be true. The selfie cam is also decent with appropriate lighting conditions, of course. Now last and definitely the least is the Dynamic Island. Apple made a big deal about this and while it is helpful and technically is the most interactive cutout I've seen on a smartphone, it isn't really necessary. It notifies you of things going on in the background. A short tap will open up the app with a long press expanding the area around the Dynamic Island, allowing you to quickly make changes to the app on the fly. Now there's a lot of buzz about this online. People are complaining that it should be the other way around, where you should be able to just tap to make a quick change to an app through the Dynamic Island, while a long press should allow you to open the app. And for me, I really don't care because frankly, you just get used to it. All right, so my final thoughts on iPhone 14 Pro is that I've always liked the design and that I appreciate what the Dynamic Island is trying to do. I found that the hardware is top notch with the software being simply brilliant. But most of the things I've just mentioned hold true for the 13 Pro. The only real wow factor here for me ties back to the camera system because you really do get a versatile camera system with feature packed software, half of which I couldn't even fit into this video. And so I definitely want to make a separate video just on the camera system itself. And that is honestly the main selling point for the 14 Pro. You get this amazing camera system, the Pro camera system in a compact design. You want a bigger screen? Go for the 14 Pro Max. Now you don't really care about the camera system you say? Well, just pick up the standard 14. They got the cooler colors as well. This phone right here is truly for the mobile photographer and videographer. It's a great overall phone that will set you back about 1150 USD. So my closing statement here then is for you, the buyer, to really think about what you want from your new iPhone. 
So yeah, this has been it for my review of the iPhone 14 Pro. Stay tuned for more videos and yeah, till we meet again.